Hi, how's it going? Hey, good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for taking time to do this interview. No worries. It was, uh, uh, yeah, we had the, just like the second day of these we've had. And like, we have never really had interviews from the US or Canada or anything like that. So I got the schedule through today and it's like, I'd forgotten that the rest of the world existed because I was so used to chatting <laughs> to European people. Oh, well, yeah, I can totally understand that. But, you know, I'm, I'm so happy though regardless of uh, being able to do this interview and be able to talk about some great music coming out a month from today yeah 100 percent. i'm i'm in thank you for uh for taking the time to, to chat oh absolutely uh, i've gotten the chance to be able to check out this album since last night and i've gotten to be able to have a few spins with it and it's a heartbreaking <laughs> album but i love it so much you can really hear a lot of pain on this album but it's something i really needed i it, i love being able to hear the darkness that's going on within this the brutality that's going on with it the, the melancholic moments that are going on it just feels so good to be able to hear all of it in so many different diverse ways thank you very much that's uh definitely what we what we were going for with the uh with the album and we very much try and like to keep things diverse and we're all we have such eclectic taste musically that there's just we're never going to be happy just kind of doing one thing or or sticking to any kind of formula so yeah i think it makes for quite naturally interesting songwriting. Oh, absolutely. And it flows together so perfectly as well, too. I mean, you know, just from the first two songs alone, I mean, going from the ending of It Dwells into Rod is just so seamless. I mean, and that's just the first two songs flowing together so well. Yeah, that's definitely something that we, um, as talking with our bassist, Connor, about this um, this morning, and like very specifically, we, I think 90% of the work of the songwriting goes into trans Positions, be it like section to section, song to song, like for for us, that is the mark between like a like a local band, which we've all done. And like I remember being in a couple of quote unquote local bands, and like you have a bunch of ideas, you throw them together, and each one individually might be cool, but there's no sense of cohesion. And then versus when you're like, I always remember that difference of like playing my own stuff versus like learning other band songs, whether it be like Metallica or Parkway Drive or like when I was really getting into metal and being like man these songs just feel right and like to to play them they they work well together like it, it's like a, it feels like there's no other way this song could have been written and with Condra that's the first time in my own band I felt with our tracks I'm like no this just feels like how this song should go and so that kind of feeling is something we've really tried to keep throughout the music and I think sometimes you just need to play it a bunch for it to start to feel right but ultimately it's it's about getting that feeling on every single transition and every single riff and every single part and you then end up with a record that is you know feels right all the way through and that's hopefully what we've uh what people get from this <laughs> Well, I can definitely say from the fan perspective, you absolutely achieve that. And yeah, and especially from uh, being a musician, being an artist, you nailed it on the head from the difference from being in a local band to being in a band that's more than just being a quote unquote local band. Yeah. The, the cohesiveness of everything, you know, just like, what is this band about? What are these songs about? I mean, rather than just having a collection of songs that, uh, or a collection of riffs, it's more important about the song structure the arrangements i mean there's so many things that can go into it i mean there like you said there could be a lot of cool parts but if there's no cohesion to it there's no point in it and yeah, when you that. are able to have that songwriting you're able to come up with an album like that's going to be coming out a month from today from you guys mm. but I, I appreciate that and i think yeah it's 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 one of those things that we we put so much time and effort into every little facet of it and like there are we've got a we've filmed a documentary while we were building the or while you're making the record and it is pretty much all like fly on the wall stuff static camera just like watching us argue and I, I'm quite excited to to release that because it will just show people like just the amount of endless conversations about one note in one bar or like uh, arguing over a time um, a tempo change of like one BPM and people like willing to die on the hill that this bit needs 
needs to be one BPM faster or else it will be completely pointless. And I'm like, some of it gets a little too far for me, but ultimately it's like, it's that that level of attention to detail is what I think makes the band something that is as exciting to me as it is, you know? Like ultimately the four of us in the band are the only people we're trying to make music for. And, you know, if the four of us like it, then so far that's been a pretty good recipe for um, other people liking it as well. I am so excited to hear that you guys recorded a or a filmed a documentary for this. I cannot wait for that to come out. That I mean, that's 100% up my alley. I, and just hearing about all those details that go into it, because there can be so many trials and tribulations in the songwriting and arrangements and BPM yeah. and instrumentation, tuning. I mean, there's so many different ways to be able to go about things and just getting into the psyche of what you guys wrote on this. I'm so excited to see that. Oh yeah, it's it's real boring nerd shit, which is where we're uh, we're at 24 seven these days. <laughs> so you know, thinking about that as well too. I mean, obviously with all the conversation and arguments that can happen from this, I mean, uh, how how do you feel about those conversations now with the album being complete and the album coming out on the first of July? I think it's a um, it's all it's been part of the process since day one. So it's definitely something that I know is from everyone I speak to in bands, the, the the way bands tend to go is there will be one person that will write and sometimes even record everything or it's a collaborative process through like jamming or, you know, people tend to either have one person leading them or it be like a very group dynamic where people are all on all on the same page. Um, whereas I feel like our, our dynamic comes from such such a place of conflict almost. There's never, a, there's, there's rarely any animosity um, between us, but it is this kind of like back and forth. So for me, I it's not even like, it's not even like cathartic to have it done. It is very much just the way that it goes, um, which I, I think is a little frustrating, but ultimately is um, is really positive. Like we we have this, this almost round table approach to writing these tracks. It will definitely be normally Dan, the other guitarist, and um, Jan, uh, our drummer, who spearhead the majority of it, but then it always comes down to, okay, what can we all do together to, to make it happen? So for me, I think the the real relief with the album coming out is not just kind of like seeing the fruits of that process, but it's more the fact that we've been sat on the record since it was completed in like March 21, um, and we recorded it in November 2020. So it's been a long ass wait just to to actually get this thing out so I think the songs that we have sat with for a couple of years now finally being not just stuck in our heads um, is is the biggest relief and I think for the people that have kind of been invested in the band for so long be that like time attention money whatever like even just people that have come out to see us once at a show and just been waiting for new music I think it is um, high time that we repaid people's um, time and attention invested in us with some fucking songs and uh, here we are oh I can only imagine how that is like uh, waiting more than a year since the album's completion to finally have this thing coming out and I just imagine you know it's just like whether uh, you know just like a riff is out there or you guys have like a a full another album that you guys are working on or whatever the case is but I gotta imagine that uh, being uh, a little bit stifled in that creativity and just waiting to be able to work on that next album uh, just waiting for this one to be able to come out yeah a little bit we actually um have a real problem with writing because it is such a i'm gonna use a technical term here bullshit process <laughs> um we tend to put it off like the when we signed the contract with nuclear blast they're like oh yeah we'd like you to do like for, provide x number of bonus tracks with each album and i'm like you're lucky if you get a full record from us like <laughs> the, the idea of having more material that isn't like we can't just like bang out songs like you see um see like Metallica in the studio and they'll have like 50 tracks down for an album and they'll whittle them down and I'm like we have an album of eight songs because we wrote eight songs and you can you can have two bonus tracks if you like but you're gonna get a six song album plus two bonus tracks like there's there's just no there's such little room for that and room for leftovers in what we do um the like truly the pandemic was the reason this album happened because we were still touring my like three years after its release and pardon me um still had offers coming in 
and were our constant conversation was when the hell are we gonna take the time to do this next record because we were we had a few ideas but like nothing maybe maybe a track and a bunch of riffs but like nothing solid and then covid happens and we were like fuck it we've got to do this now like we've never had a better opportunity to actually make this happen so from between um i was away for three months so i was actually in the states um with my wife for three months from march 2020 when it kind of all kicked off and then i get back march april may yeah middle of may and then between there and november we were kind of like all guns blazing on finishing the record pulling everything together and hit the studio first in november and um so yeah f- for us like the process is so in depth that it, it's not <laughs> uh, for me personally it's quite an overwhelming taxing thing to be writing and recording and the whole studio process is not what i love about music i very much love the touring and um performance aspect so it definitely has been it's nice that we're the kind of band that is constantly on the road and not so much constantly in the studio however the conversations now are we need to work on the follow-up to this because if we don't start now we're just going to tour for four years and then have to do it anyway um (laughs) at the end of that so yeah it is very much a constant conversation um within the band is um how do we approach you know another record and how do we do it in a reasonably timely fashion because you know regardless of the process or whatever you want to call it like waiting another four years for a record is just frustrating for everyone involved and we're never gonna put something out that we don't 100% believe is you know as good as it could possibly be and represents the band but also I I, I would not like to wait that long again you know (laughs) oh I can completely understand that but you know you know just like um, you were talking about here and just a bit ago I do appreciate uh, how much detail goes into every single song every single note everything that goes into every song and you know it's just like every single thing that's being recorded matters I mean nothing is throwaway like everything that you put on there is meant to be on there and recorded that way and I'd rather much rather have an album that is just full of quality from beginning to end rather than a a quantity of albums that just don't have that heart and passion behind it like something like this has yeah 100% that's definitely the the whole mantra within the band has been like if we do something we do it properly and it's kind of like that back to basics nail all the basics and then anything on top of that is like a bonus and that's kind of been our approach in songwriting recording touring like everything we do and um yeah like i the the second it becomes a chore or not fun or we like we write stuff and we're like eh, yeah that'll do like that's fine like game over like the bird the band's going straight in the bin and i will do something that actually earns me some money in my life you know like i'm not <laughs> gonna there's, there's no point doing this if it isn't the the best it can possibly be or it's not something that we can be proud of because like i mean yeah we don't earn a living off this it's it's still technically a hobby but it doesn't really cost us anything to do now so like financially we're in a great place but it's just not it's not ever been about that it's 100 percent about making good music and too many of my favorite bands have clearly done it so long that it's just not about that anymore um and it it, it sounds was my um, love for the music by that band that is good and it you know does have that heart so I just wouldn't I think we don't ever want to do anything that detracts from what we've already done like every single thing we do is going to be trying to add to that oh definitely and you know if something happens with the next album and all of a sudden I start to hear that heartbeat bass drum and auto tune and it just turns into a pop record I know something <laughs> happened in the band oh yeah for sure <laughs> we uh yeah we fully fucked it at that point <laughs> (laughs) (laughs) oh but uh but seriously though i mean again i just i love hearing about passion that's going into the band and just hearing it in your voice i know how serious and passionate you are about this and i can just imagine everyone else in the band is feeling the same way i mean i can hear it on the record and not just audibly what's going on too visually what's going on i love so much about what's going on i mean with uh, the videos that have been released so far with the album artwork i mean all the attention to detail that's going in with all of that it's just as important about the visuals as it is going on audibly and I love that attention to detail yeah 100% that's like something that we on the last record are um, <laughs> we were definitely showing our naivety because we none of us had ever we put out like EPs and stuff 
like that before and been to studios but never like put out a full record or you know worked with a- any kind of decent label so we very much like went into the studio and recorded the album and got it all done we were really happy with it we went to label and we're like hey here's the album they're like cool have you got like artwork and music videos and any of the associated shit that you need to be a band and we were like uh so it, it kind of felt like a, a rush um, to actually get to get to get things out. And like some of the some of the videos we put together were great and everything, given the circumstances, I think came together really well. Um, with this record, we were way more cognizant of the fact that the masters are just one part of this. Um, so for us, it was like, OK, uh, the rock video was done by our touring photographer, Joe, um, who he's with us for every single show we've done since we met him and kind of like knows the band inside and out and we would just kind of give him free reign to to do something that felt you know we wanted a video with the band performance in it um, and kind of to keep all the, the videos different so he kind of took the reins with that we worked with a guy called David on the Dwells video which was actually a bit of a more of a last minute video but he really came together and like um, we had another director let us down and David really came together and um, came up with a lot of the concept and worked with us on that and smashed out the park completely and um, Matthew who did the Cracks video actually approached us um, about a year ago completely out of the blue and was like hey I've never made a music video before but I love your band and I'd like to make one for you we were like all right like the the, weird but like fine or what's what's the deal and he showed us his photography and it was all of this like gorgeous landscape photography caught on the um, Scottish coast and we were like wow that everything that you've done there visually gives us the same feeling as uh, this track Cracks in the Pyre and he was like cool like give me some time and I'll come back to you with you know some ideas and he comes back a number of months later and was like hey I've made eight music videos um, in the last X number of months and I'm fully ready to do this like here's my pitch here's the idea like let's go and he again completely Completely knocked out of the park. We we worked back and forth with a few of the narrative elements, but all of the the visuals, like for me, that that could have purely been landscape shots. That music video would have had the same kind of impact. I I absolutely love his work. So yeah, we were really lucky to work with um, very different, but also very um, exciting uh, directors on those those videos. And for the artwork, um, that was something that was actually quite a difficult one for us we went back and forth um, the four of us have very diverse and unique tastes when it comes to music food art like everything it, it, there, are, there are so few things that we agree on it's almost laughable so um, art direction was a big uh, kind of sticking point point. Um, and we came across this artist Jean-Luc Almond who ended up doing the artwork and it was the first person that all of us had gone that's awesome like his whole style is taking um, we'll take like a flat painting for kind of all of the dark background and everything and then layer oil on top of it um, to, to get these like super textured 3D um, paintings and that was essentially the, the process for ours which we then went and got framed um, at a local frame store uh, in my hometown and then photographed so like all of the um, like tour poster we've just put out for a headline tour and the single covers and uh, some other like art focused stuff we've done have all been abstract close-up photos of the artwork Um, and then we uh, for the back so for the actual like vinyl and CD layout when you turn it over the back of the vinyl is a photograph of the back of the painting and it has like the artist's signature on it and it's like trying to give people that kind of like visceral experience it's like you're holding the artwork almost when you are um, holding the vinyl so I think it's it was still not quite as streamlined and timely as we'd have liked it but we're still like in the process of knowing you know we're we're much closer to where we want to be with all the art direction everything on this record and it's for us it's all about making progress it doesn't have to be perfect now it just has to be a step up from what we were doing previously so yeah we're very lucky to be like the UK 
has like a wealth of um, talent and like a really strong scene and a lot of we get a lot of support from kind of all of the above so to be surrounded by you know have access to so many brilliant um, artists in whatever different medium has been you know a real a blessing for us so yeah that was a, a very long winded way to say I think the videos and artwork are pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I love it though and I, I love that attention to detail like I've said before and the passion that goes behind it and you know whether you're meeting someone for the first time who just loves your music and wants to be able to do something or someone you've worked with before or uh, the, yeah. the music scene that you work with I mean there's so many different kinds of people out there that can help you out and uh, you know uh, being able to have that support and when you have something like that over there and you're able to have this scene that cares so much about music and art and everything that's going on some um, some spectacular things can really come from it and it's just yeah. it's so great to hear that and it's got me so excited to uh, go and pick up the vinyl now because I mean being oh. able to see the artwork just in the digital form it, I love but being able to pick it up in the vinyl form and be able to see that that's going to be an incredible experience yeah I that, that's what we were hoping for like I was really happy with with Maya but some of the layout and printing and like some of the product was just not quite as good as we'd hoped but ultimately it was you know our first album and we were worth absolutely nothing so for a, a label to kind of invest anything in, in us at the time was awesome um, Nuclear Blast have been really aware from day one how important the kind of physical product is to us and making sure that like for, for me as a music fan I want to receive my copy of the vinyl on or before release release day and be able to sit down with the physical product put the record on open it up kind of like get into the product as much as I'm into the music and I think that is so important for kind of like developing a, a relationship with a record and something that I have done multiple times but also the reverse with all of the vinyl delays at the minute um, plenty of records have been released and then I've received my vinyl like months later and sure I've still listened to the record I've still enjoyed it but I don't have that kind of intense connection and it it is so important for me for fans to be able to experience the record in the way they want at the right time kind of all together so we definitely could have had the record out sooner but it was really important to to delay it and make sure that the um i'm not sure if it's the same in the u.s have you guys got a, a shortage on vinyl oh absolutely we do cool yeah i say cool no it's bullshit but <laughs> yeah um yeah we definitely could have had the record out probably end of last year if not start of this year but it was it was one of those decisions that was made like if people are going to spend their money and and want to invest in our music physically then they should get the the experience that they're they're paying for um and yeah like ultimately we're all just fucking music nerds um and i really <laughs> i probably enjoy getting vinyl more than i do enjoy listening to it so i think it's it's as important to have like the right the right physical product as it is to have the the music no it's not as important but you know you know what I mean I think it's it's about the whole pack like you said it's about the whole package from artwork through to videos through to everything you do like having that um, all be centered around the music and around the art and trying to have everything play off e each other is is something that we are really striving for and I think are going to get closer and closer on every record we do and again that just makes me so happy to hear that too I mean again just the, the passion that really goes behind making sure that every kind of detail every single way that you can absorb this band is uh taken care of and you care so much about people being able to check out uh the vinyl right when the album gets released when uh the videos that come out the paying attention to the detail the the song quality uh the production everything that goes into that and what i can only imagine you know just like uh when uh you guys started picking up doing shows again and uh upcoming uh being able to support this album as well too just how much the live show matters to you as well yeah 100% like it's we I mean we were a live band long before we were recording music so it's been about that from the start and yeah that's been one of the, the more difficult things about the last few years is just not being able to be out there playing shows and like like I've said that, that that's my main attraction to, to doing this is um, you know being on the road and 
and yeah for us I think having new material and actually being able to get out there and play it to people is going to be the best part of all of this this coming together um, and hopefully we can get back out to the US um, we're hoping to do that next year but uh, it's all down to visas and bullshit and not anything fun <laughs> oh yeah and it, it only gets harder year after year I mean you got a pandemic you got visa uh, prices going up and up uh, you got insurance that goes into it. I mean there's so much that goes into it but you know hoping everything goes along with that and of course having the backing of a spectacular label who seems to really care about you guys in Nuclear Blast I can only imagine that they're gonna help out the best they can to make sure that a US tour can happen next year yeah for sure like Nuclear Blast uh, it's been really interesting um, especially that I go and meet with the um, Nathan and Oleg who are our and our contacts in um, in the UK quite often and their understanding of where we're at as a band is so spot on um, we we went from a, a really small independent label in the UK who were 100% kind of just about pushing UK underground bands and it was it was really cool and they were like basically gave us free reign as long as it was within you know financial remits to do whatever we wanted and our concern was like right we're going to go to this still independent but like you know the biggest independent metal label pretty much and it's going to be you know feeding the corporate machine and all that bullshit but truthfully their approach from day one was don't even like you don't need to send if you've got demos cool but if you don't just go record the record and send it to us like we have the faith in your band and, and what you're doing or else we wouldn't have signed you and they have been nothing but supportive in everything we've done since then um I, w- I went to meet with them the other day and we were talking about the direction of the label and how they're kind of going through this almost a rebrand at the minute with a lot of younger newer bands coming through like ourselves and i was like well you know it's it's difficult because we're not a a, a cool <laughs> hype band like it, it's quite difficult to sell us to press because there isn't really a story there it's just oh it's some guys that like making music cool um and it's it was that from day one and it will be that 10 records down the line um so there's no kind of like story we're not we probably do better in terms of physical vinyl sales than we do online streaming like it doesn't look particularly impressive and we're not really trying to go out there and be the next download festival headliners you know we're very much a more underground prospect and they were like they came back and they were like well, yeah that's 100 percent the point you know we totally get what you guys are going for you're not looking at all of the same things that a lot of our other bands are looking at um and not to say that that's better or worse you know it's it's just different we just just have a different approach and um <laughs> we're talking about radio play they were like yeah there's not been as much radio play on this uh this record as we'd have liked and i'm like we picked eight minute singles that don't have choruses like yeah no shit there's not been much radio play. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's like very much on us there's the, there are definitely better songs with singing and like shorter songs that we could have picked the singles but again we picked the tracks that we felt best represented the album and we wanted people to hear first so like and you know they're very much understanding of that that every decision is going to be based around the art and um there were there were two things that they asked of us that one are our ideal choices but it was like one of them was like can we put uh the cracks in the pie video can we put a logo and song title at the start of the video instead of at the end where they were because of some youtube algorithm stuff with really long videos and i was like if this is where you put your foot down we're in a really fucking good place like yeah sure (laughs) put a logo at the start of the video like it's really not the end of the world but like any time that there have been any kind of like limitations or requests or anything like that it's backed up by hey in our experience this is the best choice for whatever we're doing here and if we're really um vehemently against it they'll be like cool do what you guys want you know it's it's such a great relationship and such an amazing place for us to kind of continue to make art that 
is exciting to us. Um, yeah, I think we're really lucky to be to be working with them. And I'm so happy for that because I mean, it lets me being able to have this conversation with you, being able to get this insight into the band, uh, hearing about how passionate that you are with the band, and you know, just like everything that's been going into it, all the details that are going into it. And there's so much to be looking forward to, not only with the album coming out uh, a month from today on New Kid Blast, but the documentary that'll be coming out, uh, the mm. upcoming touring that you guys uh, have going on, uh, the hopefully the shows that'll be coming over here next year, and you know, whenever the next release, whenever that comes out. But uh, the fact that you guys are consciously thinking about that at least, uh, I'm I'm excited to see what's going to be coming of that because of this. If this is what you guys are doing now with the backing of such a great label with New Kid Blast, I just know things are only going to get better from here on out. Yeah, I um I very much hope so. I um yeah, it, it's just really nice to be in a. When we left our last label, we had a bunch of options and spoke to a load of labels. And uh, frankly, any of them would have been amazing to work with. Um, but we ultimately went with Nuclear Basket. It was like, we want to find a long-term home for the band. And um, it's very important to us to work with, you know, we have the same PR team as when we first started and the same uh, lighting engineer and same photographer. And like very much, we were with the same label until they um, closed. So it's very important to us to kind of like build up this team and work with people and like give back to people that support us. You know, um, there's a, our photographer was going out and doing tours with us and he was definitely losing money, but he believed in what we were doing and saw the opportunity that we afforded him. So now we're in a position where we pay him properly and he's now on the back of working with us going out and like he's shooting uh, Bob Villain at Brixton Academy tonight, which is one of the biggest shows he's he's done and like it, it's all about kind of like fostering those relationships and growing together and, and working together like we're all about that so to be kind of having nuclear blast as a home uh, feels like a really good position to be in so yeah hopefully we can continue making loud rock music and uh having a nice time <laughs> 